we already have people joining in and listening to uh, this episode uh, before we go any further i just want to um, introduce you guys to a very inspirational uh, at the same time very cool very approachable and a lot of fun uh, kumpal vaid who is the founder and the design principal of purple backyard purple backyard is an interior design uh, agency which is very interesting because we've spoken to a lot of um, marketing and ad agencies etc uh, over on the last three episodes but this is the first time you're going to speak to some like we're going to speak to somebody and you are going to get an amazing chance to ask questions to somebody who um, heads uh, an interior design agency so yes uh, also in case you're wondering uh i am not shrikant i am nishtha and shrikant's a little under the weather which is why i have taken over host duties so i really hope you guys uh, enjoy this one and uh, since most many of you have already joined in i'm just going to say hi kumpal welcome welcome to uh, hi nishtha thank right. you for having me and i'm hey. really looking forward to this chat how is it going it is going amazing uh, this morning a uh, fun anecdote i got ready and then realized that it's an audio chat that was really comforting <laughs> now really looking forward i quickly sort of you know got my uh, tea cup i was like okay i can chill relax and talk <laughs> I'm so glad, uh, but uh, yeah, we, uh, it's our loss that this is only an audio one. <laughs> it's been uh, great to see you all like dressed up and like raring to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, in in either scenario, we are very very glad uh, you are here and you uh, had a long-standing uh, relationship with Sketchnote and with Shrikant uh, for a very long time. So we we were uh, you were obviously our natural choice to pick for these uh, this one, especially because. Uh, Uh, you know you when you when you talk about agencies you first think about uh, oh there's an ad agency or there's a marketing agency or like content mm-hmm. agency but like not a lot of people realize um, what kind of a service based agency even interior designers do you yeah. get like people um, saying oh my god you have an agency agency right yeah uh, so you know interior design studios or firms it's referred to uh, uh, you know people refer to us as studios and firms and less as an agency really um which is why also i feel like um, and also when you think about interior designing fashion designing any creative sort of a field you you sort of uh, you know uh, look at the person and not really uh, always and and their story and what they are sort of uh, creating so it also sort of becomes more about their design skill set it becomes about that story that they are bringing on maybe now we have instagram we have linkedin so we get to sort of share our stories our work so you look at these so it becomes like a very creative uh, a uh, page a creative uh, sort of pool of pictures and which is why people sort of forget at times that were not just you know a, a a studio or a firm it's a full fledged business or an agency uh, that services and also uh, you know participates in executing projects uh, and that involves much more than you know uh, just the servicing angle so i've got so many questions to ask you about this uh, but first i want you to tell uh, me and everyone about you know the journey of getting started with purple backyard and how you dis- decided uh, that you wanted to be like a founder and wanting to start your own agency amazing i mean this is this takes me back to 2009 uh, when i graduated from uh, my interior designing school and uh, we refer to our college as school uh, and uh, you know post that it was the natural it was a natural thing for me to want to work with self decorated architects and interior designers which i did um though at the time i felt like uh, you know the creative banter wasn't uh, the most important it was more about um you know the the architects and interior designers sharing this relationship with the client and sort of catering to making their homes offices i did not really feel like design was at the core of the conversation it was all about you want to do something nice you want to get something made uh that to me felt like uh there has to be a little more we have to sort of you know talk about why we are doing what right because there's always this form and function conversation that we learned uh while we were at school 
so because of that i thought okay let me just take a break after i worked for a year and a half i went to uh, london ual uh, got my uh, specialization uh, it was a short course in uh, visual merchandising and staging styling um learned a lot about how things work uh, you know internationally in london especially how zara sort of uh, Uh, you know plans uh, its window dressing and displays years in advance that was such a different experience for me and when i had to come back i realized there is nothing called as visual merchandising in india bombay at the moment which this is now 2011 and it was a natural oh, again there is an interesting story here that i actually went on to linkedin i was looking for people who were doing uh, who were visual merchandisers or who were staging styling at the time in india and i did find a few people and i did write to them and that ended up you know uh, you know allowing me to sort of work with a few of these people though i did realize that that industry wasn't as large and i quickly sort of knew that i had to switch gears and uh, get into interiors again um and uh, you know i think uh, god's been kind that i did get uh, my few early projects via family and friends and then there was no looking back also cause uh, the pay scales right weren't really uh, that amazing back in 2011 uh, you know a, a, a person with like say 2 3 years of experience which i had and a specialization um, wasn't really getting offered more than um, i think 15k a month and uh, that made me realize that okay you know if this is what is at stake let me just sort of give myself a year um see where these uh, solo uh, projects are going and uh, i'll take it from there and truth be told i hadn't really planned that oh i'm going to start purple backyard purple backyard is going to be the actual name all of that but it organically sort of happened my first project uh, i couldn't turn a profit uh, i in fact lost 40000 oh, wow. and uh, that made me a little too hungry to sort of turn a profit uh, and i think give it to my marwadi jeans or what i don't know uh, we creatives aren't really trained in business right right uh, so it's always very easy for somebody to sort of uh, undercut us pay us uh, what they sort of will when we don't have experience and we sort of take our uh, you know freelancing uh, we start our freelancing stint or uh, you know whatever so that sort of taught me that very early on i realized that this is a creative profession you can i used to think that you can either you know uh, live a passion or run a business you can't do both because i was also 22 at the time right so i'm thinking that okay who should i be should i be running a company or should i be actually living my passion i chose to live my passion in those days and um, you know living out that passion for then the next 4 years taught me so much about how to run a business cause it is so easy for me to sort of come up with ideas uh, present them to the client get it executed but the other part which is managing the money mm-hmm. always got very difficult so i had to sort of pause uh, take a pause in in between my projects and sort of learn all about accounts how does one go about managing how does one go about communicating how does one go about sort of getting the client on the same page uh, that in my third year of uh, purple backyard i i sort of learned that communicating not only the design but the money aspect is so important and i feel like communication became a very large pillar of what purple backyard is today so from that then there was sort of no looking back because i realized that you do need a design skill set but you also need this whole ability to talk to your clients and then you know years went by and the goodwill kicked in and uh, here we are today where we have a credible line of business and uh, credible uh, amazing clients that given up given us an amazing opportunity to work on these amazing projects what an incredible story uh, you know you you went about pretty much the whole world and did pretty much everything and anything before you actually got started and you know thereby getting the experience that, that's amazing you know one thing that's actually standing out 
uh, in this entire thing is a pertinent question that I have is um, how has your journey been so far as a female solopreneur? Like you're the founder of your studio and you're a female solopreneur and you are the principal design principal also. Uh, does it, do you feel like it gets difficult um, specifically like as a female solopreneur, you have more hurdles an extra hurdle to cross maybe more? Um, uh, this is um, uh, this is a yes and a no for me because I feel uh, this is interior designing that we're talking about. So women in this profession leading businesses is not very different and it's been the same for generations. Uh, yes, when I did start, it was a bit difficult. I felt like people were not taking me as seriously as I would want to be taken as a business. So I have many funny stories there. Uh, I would wear my glasses. I would sort of, you know, uh, want a few white strands in my hair. I would be like, listen, I'm just 22, 23. I need to look old so that these people sort of can trust me and give me the larger project. So I've gone through that phase. Then I have gone through a phase where I felt like, uh, you know, contractors on site aren't really taking me seriously because they don't want a woman telling them how to do things, what to do, but then sort of hitting a, a chord with them by understanding that you got to spend a little time on site, have that chai ka, uh, site ka chai with them, uh, say maybe laugh a little, uh, give a few amazing Hindi galis or something like that, wherein they feel like there's this brotherhood. Again, see, I'm, uh, I'm forced to use this word brotherhood. But they need to feel a sense of, uh, uh, you know, they can relate to you. Um, so at every point, I have had this internal chatter, more than an external chatter, an internal pressure to be a certain way so that I'm perceived a certain way. And okay. only after possibly, you know, once the uh, once I think the goodwill sort of spread and the clients started to sort of come in uh, by word of mouth, by Instagram, uh, which is I think around 2015, 2016, is when I saw that there was, uh, there was strength in being uh, honest, open, owning up to that, hey, you know, this is the amount of experience I have, this is who I am, this is what we cater. Uh, with and these are our uh, services and this is how we're going to go about it and also sort of accepting that if we were wrong so I think I had built this gender stereotype and I myself sort of with my team uh, broke this gender stereotype and then went into meetings not thinking that this was really happening even if this say, would happen like a 5% of the time but I wouldn't sort of concentrate on that. I would concentrate on the fact that let's give it our best. Let's let's uh, sort of, you know, not think about the biases uh, with which one could be looking at us, uh, especially the bigger corporations when they called you for, you know, these office projects, uh, corporate projects. Right. Uh, there would be a question that uh, you're an all women team. Will you all be able to manage? Will, will the late nights be OK? And um, it was OK. It was also amazing that they were asking, but we also sort of felt like uh, we're getting judged or we might not get this project cause of this. So it was a mixed batch. Yeah. Also, um, as a, a women led business, I felt like uh, it was amazing to connect with other women within the studio, outside, uh, learn from them. Um, also, the women who came at the studio uh, had a sense of, uh, you know, uh, we love what you do, Kumpal, or say we have a, you know, a team lead called Snehal in the studio. Uh, our accounts are handled by Pallavi at the studio. So they sort of saw a lot of these uh, lead roles were also managed by women. Yeah. And that sort of, uh, you know, became an unsaid uh, uh, thing in the studio where we knew that gender roles don't really define us uh, or gender stereotypes are not going to define us and we are going to look much beyond it. It's it's so incredible that you say this because I uh, I had a question um, yeah. even when we first came over to the studio yeah. we met you guys and stuff like that uh, how, how much of a conscious decision was it to have an agency that was um, mainly uh, women led? 
uh not really i think it just happened to be and oh, then yeah. we just so proud of it and in fact at some point we were trying to hire a few more guys because we felt like the guys in the studio <laughs> will would feel outnumbered uh but uh, yeah uh, you know so this has never been a conscious effort but today we are conscious about the fact that we run a business with an amazing culture at its heart Yes. and that culture would mean that you know it even if you are a guy girl whoever you are uh, and if you have that uh, streak of following our culture the things that we sort of have set out as a business uh, the ethos that we've set out uh, for ourselves if you could be a part of it if you see that you could relate with it please join us be a part and help us expand and help us grow amazing so you brought up uh, the term culture which mm-hmm. kind of leads me naturally into my next question <laughs> this is sort of based on what you said uh, when i asked you about how how it's going as well right. uh, you know te- like like traditionally um, interior design was probably like a solo person uh, initiative it wasn't exactly like a business business like it would be one right. person taking up projects um then it turned into a bit of a studio sort of a business um thing right uh, uh, for right. many studios that exist yeah 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 how did you uh, consciously make this switch uh, into believing that okay i i am running an agency it's more than just a business it's an actual agency what was that uh, point where you realized it was actually an agency and uh, how did you approach operations differently once you did so this is <laughs> i think uh, you know uh, what happens you, you you were so right when you said that uh, we start off you know creatives just sort of start off because the first project is all about hey i'm getting to do this project is the biggest thing correct a couple of projects just pass by and you don't even realize if you are running it like a agency running it solo how are you running it you don't really think Uh, I think in the second year of my business, I sat down and I realized, oh wow, I need to hire people because the first two years were mainly me. I was the pion of my studio. <laughs> I was uh, the senior designer, junior designer, three D artist, everybody, right? Um, only in the third year, I realized that you know I need to delegate. I need to sort of go about uh, having people at my firm. and that's when it dawned upon me that oh now i am a firm i'm an agency right and i onboarded uh, two people those people were able to sort of help us get some things done though uh, the major chunk of work sort of still uh, was uh, in my basket in my kitty and that sort of still kept creating frustrations right um so then i was also working with a lot of expats i was lo- working with a lot of ceos for, of a lot of companies i would sort of observe them work i would observe them scale because there was this amazing brand um, that got us on board to create their 1500 carpet space they got funded they uh, you know formed a back office which was almost 10000 square feet another office which was another 10000 i was like how is that even possible how have these people gone from a team size of 15 to 300 that was a, a realization point where i i realized that you know we creatives aren't really trained in business right. per se and i need to uh, take a back uh, a step back and sort of have structure have hierarchy have a culture have uh, you know ideas or plans how am i going to really grow this what is the culture of this firm how do i want people to be at the firm and i think uh, post the third year the next five years were mainly about getting to know this because a i started too young so yep. it was a lot of work in progress so i would say say the first 7 8 years were all about getting to know the brand getting to know me what do i really want to do getting the right team in place so i feel like with purple backyard our culture our ethos our uh, processes um, just sort of came about with a lot of experience on the job 
and i think uh, you know i would also <laughs> a part of uh, you know today wherever i am with the process with uh, you know i'm very proud of the processes that we finally be able to crack uh, how we could uh, sort of you know connect with sketchnote also and sort of know that we need a, a you know a project management tool we need a tool that sort of helps us know where we are at uh a, a major part of this credit also goes to my husband uh cuz his and my work uh you know scenarios are very different and he comes from a business bent right so he sort of introduced me to how how are you supposed to go about uh creating a process having a, a chart that you would share with your team over communicate talk to them about where you are where you want to be how you're going to get there um and communicate 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 the more you sort of make things a process communicate and also have these tools um it sort of could make our non linear process very linear or at least put that into perspective and uh, sort of you know and then it's a trickling down effect right if i get it right if the seniors get it right the people who then join us also could get it right because they at least know what they are expected to follow yeah and for the other part which is the creative part right because we are creatives you can't really box us you can't put us in a process and then be like okay just follow this blindly there is a there is a innate need to sort of break out of that process be creative so we also had to be mindful that you know recognize the talent that you onboard recognize what their strengths are and sort of then sort of encourage them in that particular niche at times which is so different from um, you know we believe that that's a bit different from how a lot of agencies think right because in india you have to sort of multitask you have to do a couple of more things uh, uh, other than what your what your real niche or what your real strength could be so in the studio we have these sessions where people are free to think people are free to sort of do research and development and come up with fresh ideas fresh materials fresh uh, innovative ways of solving something so with this structure we also have this very organic open uh, platform where we are free to think and grow so you just mentioned like uh, using sketchnote for running your processes and stuff like that uh but also on the call yesterday when i was speaking with you you mentioned <laughs> how to break through uh yeah sketchnote uh and i was uh, i was quite mind blown honestly because the more i hear about people using sketchnote in different ways uh the more i realize these are actually a set of lego blocks right like you can use all exactly the right i mean <laughs> i was so you know i i couldn't concentrate on a screen and fill out information i was finding it difficult and uh, you know this one day i just zoomed out of i just sort of fixed the screen size proportions because uh, we as interior designer sort of are so used to looking at plans and layouts and sections yeah. uh, doing that it gave me a, a better overview of the flow of the kanban board of uh, you know the other uh, detailed project managed uh, i mean if i get got into a project it sort of showed me where the project is at so especially if i talk about the kanban board in sketch note it made me feel like this is such a game so it had like i felt like i was inside some sort of a game where um, i'm putting like you know leads converted leads uh, there in the pipeline uh, handovers everything on this page and it was like a mirror view of what we had done that year and it sort of gave me this this feeling that oh stage 1 par now i'm going to go on the stage 2 now i'm going to go on the stage 3 so it sort of uh, you know uh, made me uh, feel really pumped for the year to come and sort of keep planning it and i cannot now wait to sort of open the uh, sketch note uh, app and uh, sorry the desktop uh, uh, page and uh, add these details and sort of know okay this month looks like this the second month might look better uh, we could do this better we could do this differently so there's a lot of planning uh, made easy because i do really like to think of it as uh, you know it's been gamified and that's a big help for me it's so cool to hear all of this it's real, it really is you know uh, i mean my 
it it kind of leads me to a question like wondering um you said that you know when you're looking at sketch note and you're looking at the board and uh, you mo- mostly use this not to track productivity in your team but where where your project is at the moment and how far it has progressed yeah uh, and you said that it's a very human driven industry right yesterday when yeah. we were speaking uh, you said um, interior design is such a human driven industry where you have to you know meet people uh, yeah. touch and feel materials be on site constantly how do you um, strike that balance between running a business business and working with people all while being like a creative person not being like a specific business minded person so i think a huge part of how i am driven as a person is i love gamifying things and if i'm not enjoying it if i if i sort of uh, the most important thing with the a business like this is uh, you got to love what you do mm-hmm. if you don't sort of love every process of this which is meeting people engaging with people uh you know getting your uh, documents in place uh, enjoying the accounts <laughs> enjoying the numbers uh, enjoying this the travel that comes with it so i don't really love love the travel that comes with it but i have found a way to sort of enjoy that as well so i i personally go about it by having this element of you know having fun with whatever i do with every conversation i have and yes there could be down days there could be uh days that are frustrating because some contract on some side hasn't really performed and we want to do the handover and that's where i you know make sure from the start of the project i over communicate with our client and my team also does the same so i always say that a creative profession i feel needs for you to sort of be in love with everything that it is uh, you know and i'll also sort of digress a little and go back to my visual merchandising days um after interiors when i did visual merchandising and i did come back and i wanted to sort of explore it i realized that uh, you know i love the entire interior designing process not the design only or the uh, you know uh, project management only or the material selection part only i love the entire end to end so i think cause for me that part is sorted that i'm clear that i really love what i do the rest becomes more like a game for me which is like i'm just unlocking levels and i'm just uh, this is an interesting um, again an anecdote from what my mother in law once told me that let's build uh, you know we as people need to uh, up our building capacity you know imagine your body <laughs> as a building and you're just sort of increasing the load one uh, you know brick at a time and ultimately after a few years you will realize that because you kept challenging yourself and you kept looking at maybe having a solution making attitude towards things you bring things on as a uh, challenge and go about it looking for a solution and maybe that's the game in my brain which i'm playing and and it's just been very um, very interesting i wouldn't say it's all been fun and games but it's been very interesting because who i was possibly when lockdown hit that year and who i am as an entrepreneur today it's a very different person and that's only happened cause uh, the love part is given but i have been constantly taking on these challenging accepting them and sort of looking at a solution making attitude and going with it so the outcome has been phenomenal from that standpoint would you say uh, you know gamifying it to like the parts that you yeah. may not necessarily associate with all the time yeah. would you say that's the secret of purple backyards and your personal success in this field um, i would think so i mean i'm also realizing that via this uh, chat that you know um, uh, the love stems from uh, the you know when you love something you want to make it work Yeah. and because you want to make it work you found a you know i found a process around it which is which was have fun and yeah. now that i want to have fun i'll get through any obstacle right so i guess yes <laughs> that seems uh, fair enough absolutely <laughs> well tell me when you're running an agency uh, of the scale that you are running uh, yeah. how do you approach the idea of 
like um, scaling up and like uh, in iterative scaling up i would say uh, mm. what yeah. what your idea of that and how do you approach it and what would be your tips to somebody who's also running like who wants to run a de- design agency or an interior design agency to approach scalability say i think approaching scalability would first mean that the cxo team is very clear about what the brand stands for what the culture of the organization is externally internally um iterative for sure right you learn from every mistake you learn from every success story on a daily basis uh then sort of cultivate an amazing client relationship uh listen i i have found this one word listen the the most amazing um like a how do i put it like this this is like an like a star point on my board that listen listen first listen to what your contractor is sort of maybe uh, talking about listen to what your client wants and then communicate listen to your team as well at times have that open channel and i think with the strong brand uh, ethos with the culture and this client uh, vendor uh, contractor team relationship building and obviously staying updated with the design trends and looking at you know the forecasts and stuff like that i feel like you can definitely move towards building a successful uh, agency kumpal what do you think uh, are the most important metrics for you while running purple backyard uh, as an agency of course like what is the most what are the most important things that you have to mind when it comes to metrics metrics as in like when a person is how do we how do we assess if this has been uh, a successful uh, uh, project or yes. yeah. yeah so i feel like uh, if the project got done uh, within a certain timeline mm-hmm. and uh, the client uh, you know has not complimented us over the top or hasn't really yelled at us but is looking <laughs> satisfied <laughs> that to me is an amazing metric and the last but the most important one is uh, the reference i think uh, if your client doesn't even compliment you it's fine <laughs> but if a phone call comes to you saying that hey you know what uh, this this person who's worked with you has referred to you referred us to you um, i think that is the best metric because uh, then you know you did something right or an old client coming back to you asking for you to sort of now because uh, their family is growing their needs are growing or their office is go- growing they want you to do the part 2 the part 3 um, so yeah continued business repeat business referrals uh, that and also uh, if you end up building a team of stayers that also is an amazing uh, metric to judge uh, you know are you on the right path are you doing something fine kumpal i'm very curious you said uh, if your client isn't praising you over the top yeah. especially in such a like uh, an industry where the output is something that you can touch feel stay in uh, why why would you say something of this sort like uh, what is the rational behind it rational behind this is <laughs> that not all clients can emote not everybody is same and i think we get caught up in this validation and in this uh, you know want to know where exactly the other person is at and that person is not able to sort of communicate in many words to you that hey i love it sometimes sometimes they might not be able to communicate this but as long as your payment your referrals and the repeat business has come through i can tell you that uh, you know that's a job well done because i've had so many people that i've worked with and i feel like some of them had a higher iq <laughs> compared to the eq so the iq quotient made them very uh, sort of uh, you know tuck 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 like a process Yeah. and they would sort of not be able to tell you hey kumpal job well done it would more be like uh, uh, you know okay so this is done i am i am okay with this uh, let's move on to the next uh, you know topic let's move on to the next room i want to show you a few things you fix that you move out and then maybe you know a year later they call you again and saying that oh you remember you did this for me 
I would like you to sort of do an expansion of the same space or build me a new space. So, uh, you know, this took me time to know. But the minute I realized this, it was so relaxing for me because I wasn't really looking for these words of affirmation from my client. I was looking for just getting the job done to the T and knowing that the client is satisfied. And that sort of kept me away from wanting this validation time and again, which is something that I tell everybody in the team that listen, do your job, do the T. You will be surprised how happy the client is. Uh, the fact that they're not yelling at you, they are happy. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's kind of worked for us. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, you also mentioned uh, building a team of stairs. Yeah, yeah that's so important uh, when you're building any sort of agency, right? Yeah. How do you, like, what are your tips to do that? What's the secret to building a team that, that wants to stay on with you for years and years and years? Um, very. So we've not always had uh, the privilege of having the, uh, you know, uh, the team of stairs. Uh, but I think uh, I want to say that now we kind of do. Um, and it happened because I realized that people need to know, especially creative people, right? They need to know where the studio is at, what the what the aim and the goal is, which is where your culture, your, uh, you know, what the brand really stands for. One, that is very important. Communicate that to each and every person in the studio. Let it be the intern of the studio. They got to know what the what the studio sort of stands for. Second most important thing for especially creative agencies is share the work. Don't hog all the work. Let your team sort of run with a few things. Run with most things. Free yourself of like these daily things. Don't hold uh, design uh, so close to your heart that you don't let the other people in the studio sort of try their hand at it. So open each and every part of the creative process, the management process, wherever you can, and sort of make the right person sort of participate in it. The more they feel included, the more they feel challenged, the more they feel the sense of independence. I feel like that sort of responsibility gives you a mission, gives you a perspective, makes you feel like you're running a studio within a studio and uh, you got to then want to stay with them right yeah um, and and to share share the uh, <laughs> you know money share the money as well uh, you can't really always just keep it to yourself right so uh, whenever the team member is growing however the team member is growing a communicate review but i guess once they are at where they promised that they will be um, you know, uh, always sort of celebrate that. That is, uh, that is amazing, honestly, Kumpal. Thanks for saying <laughs> this because it's uh, it, very few people talk about you know really um, while you're building a business and while you're building your team, it, it gets a little difficult to talk about uh, actually spending time with them, actually yeah. trying to get them to grow along with you and your agency at the same time. I think yeah. a lot of people um, having a lot of uh, you know, a higher rate of employees changing at every point of time uh, go through this a lot. So thanks for saying that. That's, that's <laughs> In fact, like I have been listening to some amazing podcasts and, uh, you know, I've had I've had the privilege of meeting some amazing people through this journey. And uh, and this is something that I've picked from them, um, you know, celebrate the people that you work with and go together and not everybody is going to be on the same bandwidth. Uh, and that's where the I trait comes. It's okay, filter out. Um, but then, you know, if you grow people, people grow you. And and this is like a give and take. And it's a it's an amazing uh, journey that sort of unfolds or could unfold. Makes sense, absolutely. Uh, Kumpal, I have a question that's slightly different from this uh, at the moment, but because you are in such a creative field, uh, that also uses a lot of technology right. and a lot of technological newness. How do you keep up with it? And you know, uh, what kind of a role does this tech and staying up with it uh, in a so, so as to say traditional industry like yours? How important is that? How do you do it? It 
is important now it wasn't as important say 3 years back uh maybe i also say this cause the scale of our uh, you know studio has uh, become very different and the kind of work that we handle is very different now um so what we do is before uh, sort of uh, rejecting something we do uh, have a department where we uh, engage with the new tech which could be uh, virtual reality virtual designing tools uh, project management softwares uh, any sort of tech which is say a new autocad software a new way of you know getting your photoshop done now ai is such an integral part so i think um, our studio very happily has understood that ai is also not especially chat gpt solves for a lot of uh, uh, you know basic uh, needs at the studio it could be sometimes someone is so amazing at their work this is an example that i'm giving you that somebody is so amazing at their work but language is a barrier so now through chat gpt they have been able to resolve that they don't need me or another senior to tell them uh, how to draft an email um so again that is like the most basic example i could give you of how chat gpt has become such an important part of uh, our every day um the other is uh, you know we we tried our hand at ai but we still find that cause we are a design studio and we don't really want to just depend on what input we put and what sort of comes out via that uh, uh, uh you know uh, input we still like to engage with 3d's in house uh, engage in that entire design conversation so it it sort of hasn't really worked for us in in the in the renderings in the 3d department uh as much um, the other software that we ended up using was a uh, project management tool which is uh, sketch note um it was a rough start for us um, like i said in between all the processes everything uh, you know this was another heavy process that we all felt that we had to sort of comply with because we did need a project management software uh but now we feel like it's an amazing part of our every day it's almost like having breakfast in the morning so you you know use it for the first 15 minutes of your day and then the last 30 minutes of your day um so we've had uh, this very conversational journey when it comes to tech any kind of tech also as an interior design studio we have to keep up with, with trends we have to keep up with what the trend forecasts are where the industry is going there is a sustainability angle there is a conversation with uh, how do you sort of build mindfully uh, if you are in the public spaces department or or otherwise so i feel like uh, as creatives we are very used to sort of uh, embracing something new uh, challenging it poking questions at it and then sort of rejecting it or accepting it so i think we've applied the same to tech and uh, it's been an interesting journey and now i feel like some of these softwares are making our lives easy i'm glad to hear uh, sketch notes been like such a huge part of your journey yeah. already because it, we we hear it from creative people all the time right they hate yeah. weird processes yeah what yeah. we like broken free from the shackles of uh, doing something every day updating something every day but uh, like like we say like once you get used to it it's yeah. uh, it's you know yeah you're so right it's like getting used to it anything anything i feel you need to do for the first one month if you just do it without without thinking about it too much it could become a habit yeah absolutely right uh, kumpal uh, you know i i'm kind of thinking about this thing that you uh, spoke about earlier when it came to you know uh, building your business and you said that your very first um, after all this topic is about growing your business right and making yeah, revenue yeah. you said that you know your first project didn't even turn a profit yeah uh, there was a sense of uh, being undercut at certain points of time uh, how how does an agency an interior design agency then get on track with uh working towards not just building beautiful projects but also concentrating on making revenue and recurring revenue interesting question for me um it happened very uh slowly but surely 
I invested a lot of time in getting to know how do you I could have just hired an accountant and that's that but I felt like if you're running any business uh, you got to understand uh while you might not be the best at every process of your studio you need to understand and learn every process the fact that you sort of know um say 65% of that process or you basically understand it in a nutshell it sort of helps you get the right people or onboard the right people and then ask them the right questions to solve for the right things so i think in the fifth year of our business we've completed 12 and a half years in the fifth year of our business i bought pallavi on board and uh, you know that was i think the best uh, decision that i took at the time i had money only to sort of hire one more and i thought i need need an accounts person uh, because i was taking care of the design and the project man uh, you know project execution project management with my team and we didn't really have somebody to work on the excel with all the cost all the paperwork all of that the day pallavi walked in we have had a relationship where uh, you know the accounts team has separately sort of grown and been a backbone uh, to the creative agency so i know how that's done but i did hire the right professionals to get the job done so that i could sort of uh, you know run with ideas on site while they took care of how money is uh, collected how uh invoices are sent how the daily accounting and all that is done wow that sounds like a um you know a great addition to your team honestly and yeah. food um like okay before i say anything guys if you got any questions now is the time raise your hands and i will add you over here uh while i continue talking to kumpal please just like start yeah, ready your question on i would be really happy to answer these questions So, Kumpal, what you were saying basically is, um, you know, as a founder, you can't really be everywhere, and uh, delegating tasks like actually building um, the business aspect of things, running the account side of things, it's so important to like have a delegation plan in mind, right? Yeah. Again, this is something nobody teaches you, right? Uh, I nobody taught me. I <laughs> also I entered in the sixth year of my business. I entered. Uh, a small uh, partnership with somebody on uh, on a completely uh, different uh, business plan and uh, i saw that they were from uh, you know business schools so their mind work really different and as designers we thought that oh you know i can do this task the best nobody else can do this task the best Right. but they they were so amazing at just getting somebody else to do it the key was somebody else might not do it like the way you will do it but they can get there or they might get there uh, you know much better than you did so sort of investing that time being patient and again over communicating that what do you want how do you want it done then also hearing the feedback if you hire the right kind of talent hearing them also talk to you about okay i feel like this is how this should be done and then let them once trying it. and then if it doesn't work out they could come back to your plan so delegating has been an art <laughs> that i obviously did not ever understand i think till about 2015 a uh, post which i i definitely made it one of my best friends that okay delegation has to be done otherwise i can't really ever be free and find time to you know do so many other things that we are doing currently at the studio um so yeah that's how we sort of go about delegation sounds amazing so <laughs> uh, in the meanwhile by yeah. If anybody we wait for anyone who has a question yeah, yeah, yeah. i want to know what's next for purple backyard and for you personally um, in terms of like project growth so last year we launched soft launched our products vertical which is called the pv home and we're really looking at growing that that is nothing but we're capturing our journey of uh, you know these creative outbursts that we have on site uh, cause sometimes in the indian market you don't really find the light you want the bed you want the the bar you want and uh, that sort of uh, you know pushes us to create our own Uh, so we've been documenting that part of our journey, and we're looking at by the end of this year opening it for retail. Uh, so one is that, and with that, we are uh, 
uh, around when I got married in 2019, I documented my, uh, you know, uh, my uh, Haveli in my forefathers, the Haveli in Rajasthan. And uh, I am writing a book on it, which is called, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Forgotten Havelis of Shikhavati. And uh, hopefully, you know, it'll be ready by October and we'll be launching it with our products retail. So really looking forward to that while we keep expanding our uh, you know projects vertical uh, bigger and uh, more fabulous projects for us and more amazing clients like Shrikant so <laughs> you know that's what we are uh, trying to sort of uh, you know aim at Kumpal I, I don't think you're doing enough you you need a few more <laughs> <laughs> there's also another uh, very uh, close uh, this is this this uh, little idea IP stemmed out of the fact that we felt like there were no schools and colleges training the workers. So we do want to create a, a space for our workers to sort of upskill, uh, skill themselves. Um, and it's going to be called Workers Part Shala. So we are also sort of simultaneously looking at, uh, you know, helping the workers side. And this is uh, obviously a non-profit, but we are looking at also doing that because uh, they are another backbone of our business right and uh, yeah so yeah like you said i'm not doing enough so this <laughs> day so, but it's so thoughtful uh, to actually uh, find a way to upskill uh, everyone involved in the process including the workers uh, there like, it, yeah. it's, it's so good to hear that uh, yeah. So, Kumpal, I mean, I, if we don't have any more questions coming up, I think uh, this is a great way to like wrap the session up uh, by like uh, firstly congratulating you for PV Homes and hopefully the launch will be uh, a superb spectacle and uh, good luck on your upcoming book. So, uh, and the worker school, of course. So, uh, congratulations on all of this. And like I said, you need a couple of more. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you uh, for hosting me so well. And, uh, you know, uh, yeah, thank you, Sketchnote, for always being so amazing. Uh, you guys can connect with Kumpal over LinkedIn and follow her on uh, follow purple backyards on instagram uh, and uh, ask her any questions if you may <laughs> like if you have <laughs> looking forward guys thank, thank you, you so much again. Bye. bye